Well, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity. Today, I want to talk about some of the unexpected findings uh, that emerge throughout my postdoc that highlights the developmental changes in the function of the AGRP neurons. But before that, I wanna start with a personal story to, you know, to show the significance. So I like reading in my garden and one day I see this set of uh, bunny ears and uh, he just approached me at night and he kept coming every night uh, for 10 days or so. So we had this great relationship and end up basically having reading dates every night. And at the end of the night, you know, after an hour or so, he would go back through the uh, grass, which actually greatly highlights the importance of uh, so social interactions in these animals, which we actually have you know, a lot of examples uh, during the COVID uh, for, for us, for humans too, right? So overall, all mammals displace enhanced sociability due to social isolation. But what is very interesting, this sociability is more pronounced during the early development, right? The young animals show much, much more social behaviors. They need the social interactions much more than adults, and it's very critical for their development. Now, uh, a great example of this was shown by, uh, you know, the demigod of the social neuroscience, Panksy, showing that a gradual increase in the social isolation also increases the social investigation in, in mind. So this is our like baseline you know, behavioral paradigm, right? So one of the questions that we want to ask, like what are the brain mechanism is actually controlling the social isolation in juveniles, right? What makes the social stimulus more motivating for these animals? Now, one of the, uh, during that time, we were working on the AGRP neurons uh, in the RQ8 nucleus. Now, AGRP neurons, the agglutin-related peptide-containing neurons, actually known to regulate feeding in adult animals. Right? That's the primary function. Uh, when we're hungry, you would see an increase in the activity of these neurons. And if you ablate these neurons, for example, animals would stop eating and die eventually. So we were studying the developmental aspects of this. And what you would see is, let's say, if you take an animal uh, when they're in the nest, like they're in a very comfortable position, but if you take them and if you isolate them, what would happen is we find that isolation increases the activity of these neurons. Here's an example that we did with like just FOS, uh, yeah immunohistochemistry, chemistry, but we have shown this in different ways too. Now, in itself, this is not interesting, right? Because you isolate the animal, the mom is not there, the meat is not present, so there is food deprivation. However, when we start doing the control experiments, for example, if you would give animals milk infusion, what you would find is these neurons actually uh, still are active, right? A finding that you would never expect from an adult animal only happens in neonatal animals. Even more interestingly, let's say if you would put a foster mother who cannot provide will, uh, who cannot provide milk, you would see this effect is blunted. So this actually basically bring us the question, are the AGRP neurons like in the different parts of the development affecting the social behavior? So we continue our experiments with a little bit older animals, like weaned animals. And let's say if you would make this situation that if you would isolate them, right, in a, uh, if you would have them all together in a food deprived uh, condition, like adults, you would have this increased in the AGRP activity. But if you do this in social isolation, even if you give them food, like similar to neonatal animals, this activity uh, doesn't drop. So to isolation alone, even they're provided with the food, these neurons show a different function in young animals. And of course, if you would do these experiments in adult animals, uh, being socially isolated had no effect. So that starts us thinking maybe in juvenile animals, what is driving the social motivation due to isolation is, the, is these neurons, right? which was you know, very counterintuitive to functions of these neurons, but we wanted to basically follow this possibility. 
So, you know, we wanted to see if the AGRP activity has any effect on the animal's behavior. Now, if you will look at the behaviors of these animals, let's say if you isolate them for three hours, and if you test them how social these animals, what you would see is after three hour isolation, these animals would become much, much more social. So what we wanted to do is we want to block the activity of these neurons. So we used an inhibitory dread. We inhibited the activity of these neurons right at the isolation. And what you would find in young animals actually inhibiting these neurons throughout the isolation period completely blunts the isolation induced sociability, giving us the, you know, the you know, major uh, suggestion that these neurons might be functioning in this way in early development. And if you would do these animals in adult animals, inhibiting these neurons had no effect. Then we thought, oh, maybe we could simulate this isolation period by activating these neurons. And what we did, we run a similar experiment, but this time we didn't isolate them. We test them five minutes past, we test them again. And what would happen in that conditions, if you would test the animals over and over, they would habituate to the social context and they would show even less social response. However, if you activate these neurons at the time of isolation, right, for like uh, within that five minutes, you would see that actually the effect of basically these neurons increase the sociability. However, if you would run the experiments in the adult animals, activating these neurons had no effect uh, on how socially these animals interact with each other. So, you know, once we had this behavioral finding, we thought, okay, maybe we should look into dynamics of these neurons, right? Because social behavior is very active. We know what these neurons do in the social isolation, but we want to test two things. First, uh, we wanted to test like how the interactions, social interactions affect these neurons and how this changes throughout the development. So we want to do some fiber photometric recordings. We did some calcium imaging uh, from these neurons throughout the development. This data set I'm going to show you uh, is from P15 to P21. So these animals are not weaned yet. They're still with their mother. So as you could see in the video, green is the calcium activity. And if you would introduce the mother, you would have this uh, massive uh, inhibition of these neurons. So social isolation increased the activity. And here, what we have is with the introduction of the mother, we had this inhibition. And this inhibition is going to uh, disappear uh, as soon as we move the mother from the uh, you know, testing apparatus. However, of course, you know, we want to do the appropriate control experiments because if you think about it, mother itself is a signal for food, right? So first we wanted to continue testing these animals after weaning. So as you could see in the heat map that shows the inhibition of these neurons, actually uh, weaning and separating the mom from the feeding behaviors had no effect here. Uh, and basically the social context keeps inhibiting these neurons. And when we try different things, for example, when we provide them with food before, during and after interactions with the mom, you still see the inhibition. Of course, one could say, you know, maybe there's a learned association here with the mom. So we wanted to test all other conspecifics, right? For example, if you would test these animals with their siblings, here you're seeing the mean z score um, decrease of the uh, you know AGRP neuronal population activity, and they show the same response to siblings. They would show exactly the same response to novel peers that they haven't met before. It could be male or female. They would show responses to novel adult males females and much less response to novel adult males. And of course we run you know, a number of controls that I'm not showing here with rats, objects, but if, not, if it's not a con specific, they don't show the effect. Interestingly, they show much diminished effect to novel uh, adult males, which actually you know, could, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a threat for them uh, in the uh, ethological context. 
So after here, we decided to look into like different dynamics of the behaviors and we use this deep lab cut model to basically categorize different types of behaviors and try to map those behaviors into activity. But very interestingly, uh, the presence of the social is sufficient to uh, inhibit these neurons, right? Uh, whatever the type of the behavioral interaction actually doesn't change the uh, activity dynamics. Then uh, we wanted to see this throughout the development because what we know is they show this response early in the development, but not as adults. So we keep testing the animals. For example, this data is from P30s to P60s. And when you test the animals, what you find is the inhibition towards the conspecifics, uh, in this case, them, but it's similar to, you know, siblings, adult females, you see, you know, a decrease in the decrease. So animals start showing less and less responses to social throughout the development. However, if you would provide them, for example, with the food, the inhibition of these neurons stays very stable. Now, uh, you know, from this, we came up with the idea, may, maybe the gonadal uh, steroids were, you know, uh, changing things in the circuitry or within the HERP neurons. So we can adoptomize the animals and overectomize animals. However, that has no effect on this uh, developmental trajectory. The other thing that was uh, quite interesting was this, this effect is completely olfaction mediated meaning if you would make the animals anosmic, they stop responding to social uh, inputs completely. Uh, and currently we're working on the mechanisms, you know, which uh, circuitries these animals are, uh, basically the inputs of this olfactory circuits into the AGRP neurons. So I'm gonna give a take home message here very quickly. It's social isolation, very critical throughout the development. And uh, it has to be computed somewhere. And very interestingly, we had this uh, functions of these neurons in adult animals showing that, you know, these are feeding neurons, right? They get activated. Your motivation to seek food gets activated. Uh, you seek food and at the end you would get the food, right? Very interestingly, this function actually changes uh, uh, drastically in, in young animals but with the same purpose, right? The purpose of these neurons are to restore homeostasis. And for a young animal, what you would need is social proximity because all of the social contacts uh, would provide the, you know, would thermal support feeding for these animals. So the functions of these neurons is actually are different. So throughout the development, these neurons tap into the motivation circuitries that are integral to social behavior and lead animals to basically same ultimate function. Well, I'd like to thank the Dutrich Lab and you know everyone worked in this project. And if you have questions, I'm right here. Wonderful, thank you so much, Owner, for a really um, exciting talk. Um, I wanna open it up for questions. Okay, we have one question here. If you put a mother in with the juvenile, but keep them physically separate, is the smell of the mother sufficient to rescue? It is, it is. We've done those experiments, it's partitions. So the smell seems to be the, you know, the main uh, input of the social. Uh, so the moment that they know in the social context, they probably expect to, you know, restore that negative energy balance that was based on the social isolation. So actually that brings like, this is, basically where the physiological homeostasis and social homeostasis interact with each other for developing animals. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to find that is probably the, the interesting point is what is changing in the circuitry or within these neurons that is actually causing this like functional change throughout the development. And that, that was actually my question. Is there anything known about the circuit changes from juvenile to adult that so would... Help yes, the differences. Yes, I mean, AGRP neurons have this very delayed uh, development. I mean, they fully develop like around P20, 
However, this effect passes, you know, way past that. So it's not the, well, that's gross, you know, anatomical changes. The, the, with the leptin search, you would have this AGRP and POMC neurons basically uh, finishing their development. So our data uh, doesn't fit into that framework. As I said, we thought that was uh, through uh, gonadal steroids because like they're very in contact with the kispeptin neurons. They're in the same region. There's other inputs that are, are related to, you know, uh, changes in the receptor densities. There's, there was a lot of options, but when we've done the control experiments, we had the same effect. So what we're doing now is we're working on a circuitry uh, to explain this increase in the sociability. Once we establish that circuitry, we're going to go back and we're going to try to find the cellular or structural changes. Really exciting stuff to Thank come. You. It opens up lots of questions. All right, we have another uh, question in the Q&A. Is the chemistry of the smell signal known? The chemistry of smell signal. Okay, so we don't know yet. We're working on it. But the, the lesions that we did, the anosmia way that we did is a very, like it's kind of proof of concept uh, way. Uh, metamazole is very heavy. It is this destroys both the olfactory epithelium and VNO. So we blocked every kind of smell, like from like regular smells to pheromones. Now we are trying to basically this week, we are trying to build an olfactor meter. So we could uh, provide down with different kinds of like smells, pheromones. So we could, you know, pinpoint the signal. 